Uh, thank you so much for staying tuned. Of course, if you're just joining us, we just wrapped up another donation, another corporate citizen making good on their pledge uh, toward the uh, Telephone for personal protective equipment for our frontliners and the National Meals Program. Buckeye St. Lucia donating $200,000, a combination of cash and equipment test kits uh, for that effort. Uh, we continue this morning with uh, uh, an update. Protocols for taxi drivers uh, this morning. And uh, the we know that the, the taxi drivers have been concerned, you know, a little critical at times uh, with regard to the reopening of the tourism sector. And this morning we're here to allay the fears and concerns of uh, taxi operators here on island uh, with uh, the rollout of the protocols for you, the taxi drivers, as well as an interview. We have uh, the Honorable Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and the Creative Industries, Minister the Honorable Do Dominic Fede, as well as a taxi operator and member of the Taxi Task Force, Mr. Miller Charles. A pleasant good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Minister. Can you just speak to us about the protocols that have been rolled out for taxi operators on island and what it's meant to do in this COVID-19 scenario? I think that the uh, protocols have the safety of the taxi drivers in mind first and foremost and what it looks at is that the fact that um, we're going to be having uh, the tourists that are coming in and one of the things that we have to bear in mind is that when the tourists are coming in are they coming from largely epicenters of the disease now the United States uh, is going to be uh, the market where uh, we're going to start first now it's not possible for us to um, start tourism in the UK and Canada, our two other main source markets, because um, you have a mandatory quarantine requirement upon return, and that in itself um, does present its, uh, a deterrent, uh, if you will. However, um, the Caribbean as well, there are issues with the airlines not starting back up. Um, we don't have any confirmation. The only place where we have an indication where the airlines are ready to fly is from the United States. But that is coupled with a very precarious public health situation where instead of the cases of Corona uh, virus or COVID-19 going downwards, it is going upwards. And so what we have to make sure is that at every level of the value chain as we reopen, that we have a robust and rigid plan to ensure that all of the workers within the tourism sector are protected and the taxi drivers are no exception. So I know that some of the um, protocols would be increased sanitization. Uh, they would include um, taxi drivers having to wear masks. They would include um, special seating arrangements. The last time I saw um, the protocol, it suggested that the in, the, in the middle of yeah, the, the seat, plexiglass. Uh, there will be no um, seating arrangements and the plexiglass, yeah. um, as mentioned, um, here by Mr. Charles, so that we can um, we can ensure that our taxi drivers are protected and the visitors on the various transportation are also protected. It is absolutely key. Uh, we are living in a new normal, and I've seen a lot of suggestions to say, let's open, let's let's move ahead and open. Well, it's only been uh, two days or so that Jamaica has been open, and Antigua has only been open for a little over a week. And so we really have no indication as to what successes and what challenges they've had because it is really too early to tell um, when we are still in the early stages of reopening. So I just want to um, say at this time that what we have to do is to ensure that we open, but we open right. Wonderful. Uh, I now switch over to Mr. Miller Charles, who is on the taxi task force and the taxi operator himself. Yeah. Uh, you've had a chance to peruse uh, the protocols, uh, looking yeah. at uh, taxi drivers should regularly sanitize, the use of yes. masks, electronic methods of payment recommended yes. as an alternative for cash transactions, the plexiglass highly recommended as an added layer yeah. of protection. Uh, what is, how do you feel uh, about uh, those protocols? I think that these protocols are very much needed and um, I applaud the ministry and um, the minister for ensuring that these things will basically be adhered to and the safety of our drivers 
are basically what they place most of the priority on. Um, there were also some other issues about the decertification, which wasn't the case. And um, I would like to take this opportunity right here in front of the minister so that he can assure all our taxi drivers out there that there is no decertification program that, um, that will be going on. But all in all, I think that there is a, a phased approach where we all know that everything is not going to come back to normal um, very soon. And the most that we can do is, is comply with all of the protocols that are outlined in the ad that everybody is going to see. Um, up, um, we need to also be, we need to also be up to date with the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Transportation. The Minister also assured us that the sector is going to be regulated properly and this is the reason why he put in place the task force. The task force is already, has already have had about three meetings and we can say that we are happy with what is being achieved. Uh, we also heard from the grapevine that the taxi drivers might be getting something that, that is going to make us smile sometime <laughs> soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Mr. Minister, I hope that on behalf of the taxi drivers out there, you know, I really do hope that you are going to make us smile because we have been suffering for quite a long, long time. And, and I will take this opportunity to, say, opportunity to say that we are the first point of contact you know, we are the ambassadors of the island. We are the last point of contact sometimes before the guest leaves. And I really, really do think that, w that you need to see how important the taxi, the taxi, the, the ground handlers and, and our sector is to the whole tourism sector on the whole. And um, I just hope that everything that we as the task force are putting in, in play will finally um, come together and be accomplished for the betterment of the sector. Yeah. I want to take this opportunity to really thank um, the entire taxi fraternity for um, their own cooperation with the Ministry of Tourism, the zeal and the diligence with which they have come together to work towards um, establishing a, a very, very good spirited collaboration between the two um, departments. And I think that this is going to work uh, in the best interest of tourism. Uh, I want to also assure you that um, the taxi sector is seen by um, our government as one of the critical pillars upon which the tourism industry um, is um, hinged. And so therefore, um, we will make every effort to ensure that we give you the support in every area that we can. Um, to, to attain these protocols, we want to assist as well in helping to meet some of the costs associated because we know that it is very difficult for you uh, mm -hmm. to uh, provide the PPE supplies. Mm -hmm. You are mm -hmm. frontliners yes. um, in many instances just as the health workers are and we are committed to helping the sector to uh, get some of the supplies so that we can keep the taxi drivers and all the tourists that are traveling on their various uh, forms of vehicles safe so we are very excited and look forward to the reopening of tourism so so i'm very happy to hear about the the ppes but there, there's some other things concerning <laughs> the sector that that well, i think the, would, a lot of the taxi listen, drivers you would are, have to listen to the are, prime minister looking forward to the prime minister's budget speech on thursday um, he's expected to make a very exciting announcement as it pertains to the taxi drivers and I'm sure it is one that will intrigue the entire sector. So um, I, I, I can hardly wait uh, to, to hear it myself. <laughs> but I've been hearing through the grapevine just as you are. <laughs> and uh, to hear it from, from, your, from you directly in terms going back to the taxi protocols at this time in this COVID-19 uh, environment, uh, how can uh, the taxi operators obtain COVID-19 compliance at this time, Honorable Minister? 
Um, it is working with the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Health um, to ensure that they meet some of the standards required for their own safety. Um, this has never been about making business difficult for anyone, but this is recognizing that COVID is a reality. Mm -hmm. um, COVID is a global pandemic. It is dangerous. And what we have to do is to make sure that we uh, work with our drivers yeah. to make sure that we protect them from uh, being contracted with the virus. And every effort has been made to um, give guidance and to lend support so that our taxi sector can reach those guidance. Um, I want to thank Mr. Um, Norbert Philip, uh, Mr. Philip, who um, from uh, Southern Taxi, who has been uh, a champion of the industry and who's been a, a tireless voice mm -hmm. uh, for advancement of the industry. Whenever we have a meeting, he's never um, shy of letting me know exactly where he stands on the various issues. And it's really been um, very frank discussions with the sector, mm -hmm. but very fruitful at the same time, mm -hmm. which we can appreciate. Okay. I honestly can see some, some, some clarity and um, and I think that that now, after this, and uh, and the good the good news that is going through the grapevine, I really think it will um, later rest some concerns of the taxi drivers on our behalf. Okay. I'm pleased to hear that. Um, what I would like to also do is encourage your sector to um, apply for the income support program. I know that. A number of drivers have applied um, but really it is um, to have you to apply and then as well I think that it gives you an opportunity to become registered with the NIC if you wish to become registered um, this is a choice that you have but uh, what we have seen over the years is that in the self-employed sector which mm -hmm. taxi drivers are part of oftentimes you find individuals get to the age of retirement and they're not able to um, sustain their lives because there's no social security. So uh, what we want to do is work together and to see how we can have a very sustainable um, system by which the taxi drivers can be a part of and to really be part of the social security system. So I think that this is a great opportunity that we have and we hope that um, as many of you will take the opportunity that is presented by the NIC to get registered. I think I think they will. Yeah, I think. I'd like to thank uh, you, the Honorable Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative in Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, and uh, Taxi Task Force Spokesperson, Mr. Miller Charles, for sitting in with us as we go over uh, these protocols for taxi drivers in this COVID-19 environment. Uh, during the phased reopening of the tourism sector, the following health and safety procedures must be observed with the deployment of authorized taxi services. Taxi drivers must to wear a mask at all times. The official COVID-19 compliance obtained and facilitated by the Ministry of Tourism must be displayed when on duty. No shaking of hands, a gentle nod or elbow a greet will do, and hand sanitizer should be offered to the guests prior to entering the taxi. Installing a plexiglass is highly uh, recommended as an added layer of protection. A taxi driver should regularly sanitize their hands. Electronic methods of payment are recommended as an alternative cash transaction uh, and also uh, all guests must keep their feet on floor mats and wear a face mask throughout the journey. How do taxi operators obtain a COVID-19 compliance? The Ministry of Tourism is conducting ongoing training for all taxi operators after which checks will be done to ensure taxi operators have the required PPEs, that is personal protective equipment. Uh, it is important for taxi drivers to undergo the training and follow the advice from the Ministry of Health. The COVID-19 compliance is required for all tourism operators. Uh, for more information on being COVID-19 ready, please visit the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Tourism website or call 468-4603 or 468 
4628 uh, from Monday to Friday during the hours of 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And the wonderful thing about it is that there is no registration fee. The process fee is free of charge. Uh, the process is free of charge. The ministry will work with taxi associations, the taxi union, and the taxi companies to ensure that everyone has a copy of the COVID-19 taxi protocol and undergoes training and gets registered as needed. Well, that's all the time we have for now. We'd like to thank you so much for watching as we went over the taxi protocols for COVID-19. We do hope you enjoyed the remainder of your day. Uh, stay tuned to NTN for more uh, programming and also like our Facebook page, Government of St. Lucia. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Government of St. Lucia YouTube channel and click the notification button so you always know when we have new uh, content uh, coming from the Government of St. Lucia. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, goodbye for now. In mitigating the possible spread of COVID-19 into our communities, the following tourism-related health and safety protocols must be observed during the deployment of taxi and rideshare services. Drivers must wear a face mask at all times. The official COVID compliance obtained through the Ministry of Tourism must be displayed when on duty. No shaking of hands. A gentle nod or elbow greet will do. Hand sanitizer should be offered to guests prior to entering the taxi. Electronic methods of payments are encouraged as an alternative to cash transactions. All guests must keep their feet on floor mats and wear a face mask throughout the journey. Drivers should sanitize hands before and after any possible contact. Installing a plexiglass is highly recommended as an added layer of protection. For more information, operators should visit the Ministry of Tourism's website at www.slutourism.govt.lc or call 468 4603 or 468-4628. This information is brought to you by the Ministry of Tourism in collaboration with the Department of Health and Wellness. Securing lives, restoring livelihoods.